everybody, it's Emily at ARG Schooling, and welcome back to another Homeschool Tidbits. Welcome to Build Your Library's Homeschool Tidbits. Today we're doing episode 22, Teaching the Holocaust, Five Book Recommendations. In this weekly video series, I'll delve briefly into a topic related to homeschooling, and I'll share some of my knowledge and expertise as a homeschooling mother of four children, three of whom have graduated and one that is a new college graduate. I have literally spent the last 30 years reading and researching the Holocaust. It is a pet topic of mine. As a Jew, we're taught about it from a very young age. It's such a pivotal period in Jewish history Pretty much every single Jew who is alive today has family who were affected by the Holocaust in some way. When I was 12, I took a deep dive into studying this subject after I saw a movie at a family friend's house. Since then, I've read and I've watched numerous things on the subject matter, and I'm always looking for new information and different perspectives. I think it's important that we teach our children difficult history. We need to not be afraid of the hard stuff. It's better to slowly delve into accurate history than to paint a pretty picture just to tear it apart later when they're old enough to handle it. Particularly when it comes to the Holocaust, it is so important not to forget. And the best way we can do that is through education. Now, as a side note, yes, I will absolutely be writing a full Build Your Library Holocaust unit study some point in the near future. I believe the only thing that's really holding me back is the challenge of one, finding a spine that I like and that is appropriate for a wide age group, <laughs> and two, paring down my insane book list. Um, there's just so much material that I, uh, that I would want to add. Perhaps doing this article and, and video will help me to pare down a bit. But in the meantime, I'm going to share five books that you should read with your children, as well as one book to avoid. So let's just get the one to avoid out of the way first. There are lots of books written about the Holocaust that are not great. And you know that I'm a huge advocate for reading and that I do not buy into the whole twaddle nonsense. So it is rare for me to call out a book or, or claim that a book is bad. So trust me when I say, this is a book you should be avoiding. So if you want to study the Holocaust with your children, please do not read The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. This book has done such a huge disservice to Holocaust education on the whole, in our country and in the UK. I could go on at great length as to why this is a book you should not use in your studies, but because this is a tidbit, I'm gonna keep it brief. First of all, this book is filled with historical inaccuracies. And when the Auschwitz Museum said that this was a book to be avoided by those teaching about the Holocaust, the author argued, rather than just take the criticism, from the Auschwitz Museum, like they know what they're talking about. Second, <laughs> the book is written in a way that makes you sympathize with the Nazis, rather than the Jews who are just there as props for the Nazi characters. This perpetrates the myth that German citizens, even families of high-ranking Nazis, the main character in the story is a German boy whose father works at Auschwitz, that they were unaware of what was happening to the Jews. But this is just not true. German children, and most certainly the children of Nazis, were taught in school to hate Jews and blame them for the country's problems. And then the Hitler Youth Program, in which all German children were required to join, also perpetrated this anti-Semitism. Overall, the book is a mess, but it sadly is used in schools all over the country and in the UK to teach about the Holocaust, and frequently it is the only book used in schools to teach about the Holocaust. And yes, sure, it's fiction. but. When you choose to write about a very real genocide that affected real people, you need to take the responsibility to get it right. 
and make sure your information is factual and correct. Just about every time I've ever seen anyone on the internet at looking for resources about the Holocaust, this book gets recommended. But not here, not today. I'm going to offer you better options to teach your children. So instead of that book, let's talk about five books you should read with your children to help teach them about the Holocaust. The first book I want to recommend is Benno and the Night of Broken Glass. This is a great book to introduce very young children to the concept of the Holocaust. What I like about this book is that it centers on a cat named Benno, who is a witness to Kristallnacht, or the Night of Broken Glass. This was a pogrom, or an organized massacre of an ethnic group, in this case Jews, and Benno is just a stray cat who happens to live in the city of Berlin, and he visits a variety of households throughout his day, both Germans and Jews. And he witnesses, as the city goes from a happy place to live to a very dark and frightening place, this is a great introduction because it shows the changes that happen in Germany right before the events of the Holocaust begin. So you can see like the beginning of the book is very bright colors and very cheerful and then later on you can see things become much darker. And because this is told from the perspective of a cat, it feels, it feels very innocent. And Benno is just a bystander who happens to see what's happening, but can't do anything to stop it. The author also includes a helpful list of more children's books on the Holocaust, should you want to read more on the subject. The next book I want to talk about I could not find. I think it's in my daughter's room, but it's currently missing. And that is Will Soon Be Home Again by Jessica Babb Bond, Peter Bergting, and Catherine Renta. This is a graphic novel. And it's appropriate for middle grade listeners or readers, I'd say ages 8 to 12 or older. This book offers six survivor testimonies about their experiences as children during World War II and the Holocaust. These short first person stories allow you to see what their lives were like, both just as the war begins and throughout the war and how they managed to survive, even as well as what happened to them afterwards. Books like these are important because they tell the stories of real people. These are survivor testimonies. I read this book with my daughter when she was about eight years old as her first introduction to the Holocaust. So I think that's like a good starting place with a middle grade student. The next book I want to talk about is Beyond Courage, the untold story of Jewish resistance during the Holocaust by Doreen Rappaport. This is an important book to include in your studies. So many people just assume that the Jews just went like sheep to the slaughter, but that is just not the case. There was a huge resistance movement full of brave men and women doing everything they could to sabotage the Nazis. This book is fantastic as it takes you through the Nuremberg Laws all the way through the entire Holocaust, exploring the ways, both big and small, that Jews resisted what was happening. This book is written for a teen audience, but I think it could be read to children as young as 10. Next, I want to talk about a historical fiction. This is When the World Was Ours by Liz Kessler. If you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you've probably heard me talk about this book. What I love about this book is that it explores different perspectives and paths during the war. You follow three children as the war unfolds, two that are Jewish and one that is not, and each child's perspective explores a different scenario of what happened to so many different children during that time period. It is beautifully written. The author based one of the storylines on her grandfather's experiences during the war, so you kind of get a survivor testimony there. And so technically this is a young adult title, and it does deal with some, I mean it's about the Holocaust, but it does have some very like upsetting moments, so I would not read this with a child younger than 12. My daughter and I read it this past fall when she was 12. So it's very moving, very heartfelt, and very beautifully written, but very honest portrayal of different perspectives. My final recommendation is Requiem, Poems of the Terrazin Ghetto. This is by Paul B. Janesco. 
This is a collection of poetry that the author based on his extensive research about the Terezin ghetto. Terezinstadt was a sort of show camp that the Nazis used to prove that they were treating the Jews humanely to the outside world. The camp was full of Jewish intellectuals and artists from the city of Prague, and the Nazis allowed them to perform music and operas and give lectures, so it gave the facade of, see, they're just living normal lives within the walls of this ghetto. But the reality was that Terezin was just a way station to the gas chambers. The poetry in this book is moving as he explores what life in that time and place was like through fictional characters from different backgrounds. You even have non-Jews and even some of the SS guards have poems in here exploring like what they were thinking and what was happening. So it gives a pretty wide view of this place and time. Let's talk for just one more second about just teaching about the Holocaust in general. So much of what is written about the Holocaust romanticizes it by focusing on someone being heroic and saving the Jews. And yes, there were people who did in fact risk their lives to hide the Jews, and these people did exist, and we honor their memory. But the number of people that did so was relatively small when you look at the overall population of Germany and Europe at that time. But so much of the literature set during this time makes it seem as though so many Germans and so many other Europeans were risking their lives to rescue Jews. That's a distortion of accurate history. So yes, do read some of those books, but balance that out with others. We want to focus on the experiences of Jewish people, as well as others who were targeted by the Nazis, like the Roma and homosexuals and the disabled. As with any other historical period, when you're reading about the Holocaust, it is important to use multiple resources and be sure to ask your children as you read who created this source and why and what biases might they have. If you found this video helpful, I hope you'll check out Build Your Library curriculum. Build Your Library is a secular, literature-rich homeschool curriculum inspired by Charlotte Mason's philosophy of education. Based on nearly 20 years of homeschooling, I created the curriculum that I wish I'd had when I started homeschooling my own children. I have spent thousands of hours cultivating the best literature to enhance your children's studies. Our lesson plans make homeschooling simple. Just open the lesson plans, gather your books, and go. Our easy to use lesson plans include everything you need to homeschool. Just add math. Choose from our full year K-12 levels as well as our fun topical unit studies and our newest product, Lip Bites. With Build Your Library, you will cultivate a home library filled with captivating literature and you'll raise children who become lifelong learners. So snuggle up with our lesson plans and a good book or three and have your best homeschool year ever. I hope you found this tidbit helpful. Come back next week for more homeschooling inspiration. Until next time, happy reading. Bye.